Today's episode, I want to talk about religion and about something curious in the birth of religions, specifically Judaism and Christianity. So this is a thought I, I've been developing over the years. If you look at Judaism versus Christianity, the God of the Old Testament is very different from the God of the New Testament. So Yahweh has all the, Yahweh, the God of the Old Testament, has all the qualities of fire and brimstone and you don't cross Yahweh. And there isn't really a devil in the Old Testament. The, the Satan... The word Satan appears 29 times in the Old Testament and 22 of those, I believe, are in the book of Job and all of them use the definite article. So he's not Satan, he's the Satan. And this is similar in Arabic culture. There is a a set of demons called uh, Satans, the Satans, or Shaitans. I think they're Shaitans, actually. So they're, uh, they're tempters. They are tempting spirits which tempt us from the way so where that comes up in the Quran is in the uh, satanic verses where Muhammad wants to get the the elites of Mecca on his side and so he warps his revelation a little bit and that is attributed later to a shaitan which is Sean Connery's version of Satan. It's a shaitan that uh, inspired him with false verses so a later revelation from Allah revealed that that was not the case at all so what he said was that the the old gods and and Allah could be reconciled and the elites were delighted but then got ripped away so it's in the old testament the the conception of the devil is the same as that it's uh he's a member in God's court rather than equal to God himself whereas in the new testament the Evil traits are embodied in the devil and all good traits are embodied in God. So they become polar opposites and completely opposite traits. And God is obviously greater than the devil. So it's interesting that in Old Testament they're integrated, but in New Testament they're divided and they become more fleshed out in their own. Those separate poles are fleshed out. And one reason it's that I think is going on there is that if you look at the cultural context of the evolution of Judaism versus the evolution of Christianity, if you look at the cultural backdrop, you might see an explanation for why that is what emerged from the unconscious. Why? Because I do believe that when people are writing, it's, it's like a revelation. And when people wrote the Gospels, it was like a revelation. When Muhammad was quoting the Quran, it's like a revelation. I don't necessarily think that there's anything dramatically well, there's something special about it, but if you look at when authors write a book that they just say pours out of them. A uh, few examples. Uh, so when Dostoevsky wrote Crime and Punishment, he wrote it in a very short period of time, and it just poured out of him. Same with Tolkien, Lord of the Rings, it just poured out of him. And there's a lot of authors who just talk about their books um, running away from them and they're they're just writing down what they're hearing rather than thinking ahead and thinking out the story i know stephen king has said that if he's ever if the story is stops being ahead of him at any point then he's he he stops writing he knows it's not going to be a good story because it's not inspired it's not running away from him and this goes back to elizabeth gilbert's idea of the genius in Roman culture, the idea of being inspired by muses as it being something outside of us. So I see that that as that has been what's going on in Revelation, that I don't think someone sits down and invents these religious stories. I think that they come through them and that's an expression of something that makes that consciousness whole. And if it's depending on the level of archetypal energy, it makes a culture whole. It does something binding for a whole culture, which is what obviously happened in the case of Islam and with these other holy texts. So let's look at the backdrop of Judaism with that in mind. Where did that evolve from? So we're talking for f- proper Judaism around five 600 BC. Now there were older texts, the, the Pentateuch of Moses, the early books of the, the Old Testament were there. But the religion, interestingly, was the religion of the Israelites at that point, whereas the 
over time they split and there was the kingdom of Judah which is centered around Jerusalem and then there was the rest of the Israelite land which would have been the other 11 tribes or 10 tribes of, of Israel and then Babylon came along Israel got conquered but Judah stood and then eventually Babylon conquered the kingdom of Judah and took the elders and the, the high priests to to Babylon to kind of in captivity so when they came back that so in Babylon they developed the aspect that became the our the Old Testament as we know it so the religion actually split in two there and the religion of the Israelites was the Samaritans and then you had the religion of the people of Judah which became Judaism when they came back after Cyrus of Persia defeated the Babylonians and released the, the Jewish people to go back to their homeland. So if you look at the context in which Judaism developed before that conquering of Babylon by Babylon, you're looking at a, at a region that's highly unstable. Uh, Egypt would come up from the south, you had the kingdoms from the north I guess, would the, would the Assyrians have been around and you had the, the Babylonians, the Medes, the, the Persians, so there's these waves of of just conquerors and and the vanquished. So constantly shifting geopolitical landscape and that's a very turbulent environment. And how do you find stability within your consciousness knowing that within a few years you could be conquered by those outside forces? And you can imagine being in Judah when the kingdom of Israel had been conquered and thinking, well, God, Yahweh didn't protect them. Why would he protect us? Um, so you could have all these kind of thoughts stirring or will he protect us or why didn't he and so it leads to the evolution of a that type of religion where you get Yahweh the God who says that anything bad that happens is because you're not doing what I say so obviously you're not praising me enough um, the, maybe the people of Israel didn't praise me enough but if you in Judah with the, the temple, if he managed to keep praising me, then of course I'm going to keep looking after you. You must be praising false gods. Maybe they were praising false gods in Israel. That's why we had to get rid of them. So you could look at that kind of religion and the God that you want over you is a God of war, is a God that's powerful, that's thund firing thunderbolts and is kind of, has, has no problem with killing people. And so you are the chosen people. You he loves the people of Israel and he's going to protect ye from the rest of the world. And so that that God of fire and brimstone with the, the traits of the devil integrated with the traits of um, an all-loving God makes a lot of sense against that backdrop of war, of being a small state surrounded by big fish who are at war. And so that's the kind of cultural backdrop I can see Judaism emerging against. And it makes sense. And then they get conquered and brought to Babylon. And it's just that sense of defeat. And it's a reflection that leads to the amplification of that kind of a God. Whereas you compare the situation with Christianity. So obviously this is 2000 years ago, 2020 years ago. The situation of Christianity was the Holy Land had been conquered by Rome. It was a Roman state. And you're looking at a massive Roman Empire made up of millions of different types of people. And if you look at the evolution of the Bible, you've got Matthew, his gospel is puts Jesus as the saviour of the Jewish people, so keeps it very local. But then you look at Luke. Uh, Mark would have just been an early one, he wouldn't have been that biased either way, I don't think. But Luke is certainly very much about the Gentiles. And so one way I can explain that, or a bit of evidence I can give, is the genealogies. If you look at the genealogies, the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew, it goes through Joseph all the way back up to Abraham, who would have been the father of the Jewish tradition. Whereas in Luke's book, he traces the genealogy of Jesus also through Joseph, but all the way back to Adam, which connects him to all people. So Judaism become, or this Christianity becomes the religion of all people, Gentiles, Jews, everyone is involved, whereas Judaism was always for the chosen people, for the tribes of Israel. Christianity opens it up and democratizes it. So we're no longer a small fish surrounded by big empires. We are a small fish within a big empire. 
Christianity emerges as this religion which can join all people together in a religion of love. It's it's it breaks down those boundaries, and there's still an us and them, but the them it gets polarized into this total evil, and there's the all loving good God. So if you love God, we will join together. We will look after the poor. And that's the foundation of Christianity. So it comes across as it's a, a religion of, of charity and looking after the weak and looking after the less fortunate. And so that's a very good movement to have in an empire in which the distribution of wealth and resources would have been very polarised. And it's actually very similar in Islam that Muhammad in Mecca at that time, Mecca was in need of great redistribution. It had very rich at the top and then a lot of disaffected poor. So it's a way of joining those disaffected poor and the ones who aren't super rich, the ones who aren't benefiting from this system. A religion emerges which can give those people a sense of meaning to their lives. It, it joins them all together and makes them help each other. So the poor are going to now help their neighbours and everyone's going to feel part of something connected and maybe that evil is the filthy lucre it's the it's the rich it becomes the evil becomes the rich it is easier for a, a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven than a, a camel to enter through the eye of a needle so there's more to that saying i think historically but the way it's generally interpreted is you know it's rich men aren't welcome in the kingdom of heaven so there is that sense of maybe the wealth is evil and but the the, the goodness is something that's separate from wealth and it's something we can practice together. And so that makes a lot of sense for religion emerging in a time of peace, but domination and unequal distribution of resources. So a golden age of an empire. And it very much matches up with what we're experiencing today. And the same in the birth of Islam with Muhammad. You can see the, the cultural context there is also the very rich in Mecca and the poor and there was a need for some a social justice movement a, a redistribution and it's out of that that the inspiration came for the Quran and so you can see the similarities between the Quran there and Christianity the similar similarities between Allah and God but then you see that Yahweh emerged against a different a very different political backdrop and that backdrop continued to be relevant if you think of the Jewish diaspora, the Jews having to go into exile and the the image, the symbol of the wandering Jew, that, that the loneliness and the pockets of Jewish people all over the world in exile from their homeland and awaiting the, the third temple. So there's a very different, that, that image of God continued to be relevant for, for the Jewish people. And so you can see that the phrasing the phrasing the, the the lens through which god appears to a people depends on where they're at in their development depends on where they're at when they need it's not to say that that spiritual thing does not exist or does not have a higher truth but just that this is the way it gets inflected within the culture that it is born in and so i thought i would just share that with you today if you enjoyed the video um, i'd love to hear from you any comments any feedback insights and yeah hit the subscribe button and i will see you next time give us a thumbs up and yeah thanks for watching